Hello and welcome to another edition of the Hurry Up from the Sports Heads on Verge magazine. Uh, I'm joined by my normal band of merry men, as I always am every week, to talk about all things American sports in the, in the 30 minute section. Um, I'm here with Sam Morgan, Daniel Fluey, and we are joined by, at last, uh, Chris Braithwaite in uh, Miami. How are you guys? Yeah, we're good. Doing well, doing well. Hi. Give me that energy. Yeah, not too bad. Hi. It's raining, you know. Welcome yeah. to London. It's raining here, sunny over there. Yeah, I don't like seeing that. I can see that sunlight. Yeah, don't worry. They're not, <laughs> yeah, man. They're, they're, yeah, they're not allowed out anyway, so so uh, that equals things out anyway. They're on, they're, on, yeah. they're, on a, they're on a curfew now, so the mayor <laughs> said no celebrations for you guys. It's all right. No fun zone for now, but we'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> right, so so we've got uh, a few su- subjects we want to get through. Uh, um, we will start with, um, you know, obviously Cam Newton. Uh, big move. Uh, just in in the off season, uh, he has moved for, with a one year contract to the New um, England Patriots, which uh, I've, I'm sure you can tell by my voice I'm very disappointed with uh, because I thought they were out for the count. Anyway, guys, you know, with two minutes on the clock as we normally do. Um, Sam, start first. You know, what's what's your view on this on this subject? I mean, it's a great move, obviously, for the Patriots. Um, were they the first team in history to replace an MVP with another MVP? Um, so that's it. it's a it's wise wise move. I think the one year deal is obviously perfect as well for both because there's just no um, sort of room for error on Cam's point of view if he wants to obviously stay there. But is there's no, that takes away some of the risk, obviously for uh, Belichick and the organisation, um, and it might even give them that slight sort of backup that they've got. Um, in a number two, still to sort of train it, train him up, obviously as well. But um, I know people obviously talking about, oh, that's it. The Patriots are still going to be on top. I still don't, I still don't believe that. I think Bills have still got the the strength there to obviously uh, potentially topple that division. Because um, I, I mean, yeah, look out, look around it. I don't think there is anyone else that's really going to going to topple them. But um, well, obviously, with uh, Stefan Diggs obviously going over to the Bills as well, um, gives them that added strength. But on Cam, it's a great move. It was it was inevitable he was going to be in a team. I think as I'm sure we're all a little bit shocked it was the Patriots potentially um, that he's ended up in. But I thought he was going to end up somewhere, but potentially as a number two, um, and by his time to get in. But now, you know, he has every right to be a, a starter at the Patriots, um, and I envision that will be will be the case. Um, but let's see how healthy he is, how healthy he stays as well. Um, yeah. I know that they've always had the, they've always put finance in there protect, to protect Brady. Mm. Maybe actually now the O line is probably a, a little bit better than what maybe had at the the Panthers. That actually you yeah. might see the, the best of Cam Newton. Um, so yeah, it's good things. It's good for all round, and yeah, I'm just glad that he's staying <laughs> in the league. And um, I know some people don't like his personality, but I quite like his uh, his energy that he brings to the uh, to the league. And, and yeah. Be, be interesting to see what headscarf he wears on his first uh, interview. I mean, that, that's one of the things that I, I find interesting that, that uh, you know, obviously why they went for him, because obviously he was on the shelves for quite a long time. So it's, it's, it's interesting to see if, if like, uh, uh, Belichick's had some type of reassurances about his personality. So therefore, you know, he can, it's something that he can actually work with. Uh, you know, Daniel, what you, what, what you, what's your thoughts on it? You know, I'm a little bit shocked that he went to the Patriots. Um, I I felt that Jags would probably be a better shout for him and for the Jags organization. They need star power. Um, Money-wise, he probably could have squeezed a little bit more money out of the Jags. But I think in terms of it's the best place for him to get his career back on track. Um, the Patriots have a great record of getting sort of, you know, the... I don't want to say the tossaways of the league because that's wrong because Cam wasn't. But you know what I mean? Like the people that necessarily, you know, not everyone's going for. And, and they they have a great rec- uh, record of just turning them around and making sure that they, they excel in the system. And I think the best thing now would be to put a system in place for Cam that will make him excel. They've got good running backs. Sonny Michelle is another example of a good running back. My only concern is their sort of receiver court. Um, you know, when Brady was there, it wasn't great. They've got Julian Edelman. They've got Mohamed Sanu. And they... Um, Nikit Harry, um, I think. Um, 
So they don't have a lot of great receivers um, or great deep threat. Um, and Cam could throw a good deep ball as well. So I think that's going to be an issue for for himself. But I think, you know, they're going to put him in a great position to excel. Uh, and we'll see how it goes, to be fair, from an offensive point of view. I think they're going to make it exciting. Um, I do believe with Sam that they the Bills are a strong team and they're... And they're you know, they've just added Stefan Diggs. They've been through the trenches. They've got more experience as a team and as a unit. They are strong defensively. But, you know, don't rule out New England. New England's still the, the, the champs of the of that league and uh, of that division. We'll see what happens. It's, it sounds like um, you're, you're, you're uh, not believing in, in the whole thing. I'm, I'm feeling the vibe that you're, you're not really buying into it uh, too much, Dan. Um, no, I, so- bought, I bought in. I bought in. I bought in. It was just New England's, outside of Cam, New England still don't... <sighs> They just don't have pieces. They just don't have weapons at all. And I'm just a bit worried about New England as a general, um, as a team in general, not necessarily just with Cam, but even defensively as well. They just don't really have a lot of pieces. So, uh, Chris, you are um, the actual, your, your team is actually in the division. Um, so how happy are yeah. you to, to, to see this? What, what's your view on this whole thing? Uh, first, I said, um, when I saw this move, I was like, okay, the Patriots still wants to and still keep not only their their um playing um hold on the AFC East in terms of championships but also their psychological hold on 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 the, on the league also um the bills have made their moves but no one has actually beaten the patriots or the patriots haven't let anyone beat them in such a long time that there is a psychological battle for the rest of the uh, AFC East to go ahead and try to fight through. Miami's going to be a bit, sh- should be stronger, obviously, than last year with their new, um, with their new team, with their new team um, in the organization. And um, and the Bills also got stronger. I'm not sure about the Jets. They're still on the bubble, but I believe there will be um, a race for for the top. Be not sure how Cam does fit inside uh, the system as yet. But um, in terms of the Patriots getting Cam, I will say this: he's 31, still a beast. Um, I think he did need new atmosphere. Um, even I would have gotten bored of North Carolina. I think the best thing to do there is probably a Duke game. I'm not sure. <laughs> but um, I think he needs a winning environment now. And, uh, you know, the Patriots are good at go ahead and fixing misfits, if you want to say, or um, being able to curb um, players that may, you know, have a lot of pizzazz to just think about winning. And um, I think Cam at 31 definitely needs that. Um uh, but it's beautiful how Bill Belichick likes to get these kind of players like Moss, um, Corey Dillon back in the past that have the personality, but he also knows that they're winners. So it's great to even see that kind of, uh, um, if you want to say, a handshake to Cam or um, to say, hey, come come play with us. But also the pass to signing for one year is a flirting with danger kind of protection. You know, so they want to make sure that that they get that they get the best out of him before they obviously give him a long term deal. But I do well, think I mean, that they still have their hold on the, the league. It, it um, does, I mean, the only thing is, is that what my my concern is that it doesn't always work with with um, him pricking up rogues because obviously you look at Ch- Chad Johnson, who's the big one of the biggest personalities, uh, and that whole environment just completely crushed him, uh, and then they got rid of him. But it's obviously a one year deal, so no harm, no foul. If it doesn't work, then they just Get him, get him moving. So, right. So next, next up, we have um, uh, a comment from Brandon Marshall. Uh, Brandon Marshall said uh, that he believes that Green Bay Packers have actually wasted uh, Aaron Rodgers' career. Now, obviously, Aaron Rodgers is my favourite player. There's a lot of players, uh, a lot of people that, that love Aaron Rodgers. Um, if we start from the reverse uh, with Chris, um, so what's your what's your view on on this whole on Brandon Marshall's opinion? Ah oh, man, this is gonna be great. I don't think you're gonna you're gonna like this, Dre. You may like it. I don't know. We're gonna see. Here we go. Um, could uh, the question is could have they as um has Green Bay wasted Aaron Rodgers' career? Do I agree? Yeah. No, I do not. He's a <laughs> Hall of Famer. Um, he's a Hall of Famer right now, and he pretty much he pretty much we don't even remember Brett Favre. We don't we don't talk about him. He's pretty much got rid of one of also one of the greatest um Hall of Famers as his predecessor. We don't really talk about Brett Favre, do we? And also, um, I think he could have also helped himself in the situation, if you wanted to say the Packers could have. Yes, the Packers could have given him more weapons, could have gave him more wide receivers and running backs and so on and so forth. But also Aaron Rodgers has an arrogance. Aaron Rodgers wants to be number one. He wants to be massaged. He wants to be 
he wants to be pacified. That's the personality that you know. And sometimes he doesn't like to take accountability. So I think inside of the organization, especially the fight with uh, McCarthy and how that went down, we all can see, yes, it probably wasn't a great marriage, but Aaron Rodgers definitely held his power to make sure that he got what he wanted. Um, do I think that he will go on and win another championship? I don't think so. I think there's too many great talents around the NFL and for the rest of his career for him to win a championship. Do I think that they wasted his career? I'm going to say no, because he is a Hall of Famer, and, and that is great at the end of the day. Sam, um, I, I, I can read through the face you're going um, to agree with me. You agree with me. I'll let you get him. <laughs> I, did, what? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I, I'll tell you what. Have they wasted him? No. Have they let him down? Yes. I think it's two different things, I think, for me. I think, have they wasted him? No, because, you know, Aaron Rodgers is, is still going to go down as one of the greatest quarterbacks to, to play the game. So, um, if they had wasted him, we wouldn't, have, we wouldn't have seen that. However, letting him down with coaches seeing the weaknesses in the team to give him the tools, they haven't done that for me. I know you've got Devontae Adams, but it was in, then what? It was so. I feel like they haven't. They ha they've just let him down in that way. Do we talk about Brett Favre? Yeah, we do still talk about Brett Favre. I mean, Brett Favre still gets spoken about. Come on, like <laughs> you got a, bit, you got a bit, of, um, bit of respect on Brett Favre's name there. To be fair, um, Aaron Rodgers probably could have been better in another organization. However, again, we've just spoke about the goat in a sense in terms of Brady and the fact that they didn't actually have some of the best players in all the sort of big high-end names. So the organisation kind of helped them along the way. So I think that I'm just going to say let down. I don't think he's had the correct tools, the correct um, the organisation probably haven't actually ever let him down, not wasted him um, because he's, he's made best of a situation. I don't think they've wasted him. I can't say that because I think if you're is still one of the greatest QBs with the tools that they have had, in a sense, they probably could have continued to do a little bit better. So maybe actually Aaron Rodgers may see look himself in the mirror at some times. So that's how I would see it. That's how I would look at it because there are times actually, it's, like, it's like anything. It's like anything. If you look at um, the, the Saints and Drew Brees, is it Brees? Whose fault is it that they haven't gone on and went one something? It's not just Breeze, is it? Well, I mean, I, I definitely, I definitely agree with you. Your your argument wasn't strong enough for, for me in uh, I'm not blas you. blasphemous <laughs> statement <laughs> from from uh, really? from from Chris he, there. He Chris kind of there. Me, Daniel, I I Daniel Flui, please <laughs> can you correct me. this 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 man on the goat? Mm. Let me let me let me school you boys, okay? Because firstly. Oh. Green Bay have not signed a first round offensive talent at all since Rodgers has been there. That's right, first round talent. They've not done that on an offense at all. Secondly, the time when Aaron Rodgers has had a top 10 defense, Aaron Rodgers has had a winning record. Half the time when Aaron Rodgers has not had a winning record, he's either been injury, injured or they've not had a top 10 defense. When Aaron Rodgers had a top 10 defense, he got them to the Super Bowl. When he had another top 10 defense, he was 15 and 1. Yes, they wasted him because when you consider Aaron Rodgers is arguably the best thrower of the football to ever grace the NFL, it's a waste that he's only won one Super Bowl. <laughs> I said arguably. Arguably, Sam. Arguably. <laughs> Secondly, it's the same thing. You've got Dan Marino. Was he wasted with the Dolphins? Yes. Did they get him a Super Bowl? No. With that talent, arguably one of the best quarterbacks of all time? No. Peyton Manning, did the Colts waste him? Yes, because Col Peyton Manning is now seen in a better light now that he has two championships instead of the one with the Colts. If Peyton Manning retired with one championship, he wouldn't be seen in the same light. Let's not lie, Joe Montana has four. If he didn't have four, he wouldn't be seen as, you know, Joe Montana. Championships mean more to quarterbacks than any other, than any other position. And the fact that he's only had one with his talent is, is, is a disgrace. And I think it is a waste because you say it's not wasted. Yes, he can go down as a Hall of Fame quarterback. But when the NFL did their centurion list of 100 greatest quarterbacks, Aaron Rodgers' name wasn't there. It wasn't even in the top. It wasn't in the, in the 10 that was considered. Now he'd be won more championships than he would have. And I think for me, it's a waste because given the talent, you surround him with pieces. It's a, it's a fact. 
And, you know, we talk about Brady not being surrounded. He still had Randy Moss. He still had Gronk. And let's not forget, Aaron Hernandez was a beast of a tight end before, obviously, the whole situation happened there. And, I know, small spot, <laughs> but he still was a talented... <laughs> he was still a talented um, tight end. And on top of that, Brady's always had a top 10 defense for the most part with Belichick with a great defensive mind. So when Brady won his first three, that was on the back of defense. So let's not act like Brady didn't get help. Rodgers has not had top defenses. He's not had top offensive weapons. The Packers have wasted him. Well, we had a nice, nice little show there before you mentioned uh, Aaron Hernandez. Yeah, I say, no, I, he was I, talented. I, I was think, talented. I think, I, I think that um, uh, Aaron Rodgers is, is greatly underestimated, and, and I think that he's going to be very, very motivated this this coming season because of people have written him off and a challenge has been put down to him. So we're going to see the best of Aaron Rodgers as we did at the start of his career when he was left in the back room for, for so, 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 so long. Which leads me to this uh, great question for you I, guys. Can I have a bet with someone then on that, that he doesn't come under as the top one of the top five court QBs stat-wise this season? Well, this leads me to this this uh, this conversation we're going to have now, which is, um, you know, which, which guys, which is your, uh, which QB this season currently, obviously now we can include Cam, is your favourite for the 2020 MVP. So I will start with Daniel. Uh, well, who, who gets your vote? You know what? I'm going to go a bit different. I don't want to go with the Patrick Mahomes. I don't want to go with the Lamar Jackson. I do think that arguably is one of the two of them. But I'm going to go a bit outside the box. I'm going to go with Deshaun Watson. I think Deshaun Watson arguably is just as talented as the other two I mentioned. He's a great QB. I really love him. been watching him since he was at Clemson. Um, great, great QB. Um, you know, Dabo said he's the Michael Jordan so, you know, of the QB, so he's high praise. And I just feel, you know, a lot of talk has been talked about the AFC in terms of the upcoming talent in QB, particularly Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson, which is great and they deserve it. But I think Deshaun Watson's getting overlooked. Um, and I think right now, particularly the fact that he doesn't have D-Hop, um, and he's got basically, you know, weapons that can't stay fit or can't produce well. I think he's going to elevate them and elevate the Texas. And if he does well with that with that team, especially with David Johnson, who's arguably lost his best days are behind him, it, you know, Will Fuller maybe doesn't stay fit. If Deshaun can get them to the playoffs, I think he should be um, nominated for, for MVP. You know, when he started off his rookie season, he was on course to be rookie of the year and maybe offensive player of the year as well. So I do think he's got he's got a point to prove. I think he's, you know, like Deshaun, I think he's got, he'll be jealous to hear that Lamar and Patrick are getting all the praises. And I think, you know, it's going to be him. Uh, I think second shout out will probably be Russell Wilson, just because he's my boy. Love him to do, love him to death. Mr. Consistent in a in probably the, the, the toughest division um, in football right now. If he comes out of it and gets to the top, you know, you know, what Russell Wilson is Russell Wilson. I just think he doesn't get enough love. It's quite 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 uh, interesting. I thought you were just gonna go with uh, Russell Wilson first of all. I, mean, no, I thought no, you were gonna no. have, do a, a nice homer pick there, but um, it's nice of you to 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 look at Mr. Watson and see. Um, let me go because I can see Sam is ch- is chomping at the bit there. Uh, so, so Sam, who are you thinking? Definitely not Watson. His go-to guy. Is, <laughs> his go-to guy is gone. Um, I don't think you can look past Lamar Jackson again. I just don't. Oh, I, just, I just look at the guy now of how what he did last season. And I just think he's just going to go another level. I think Pat Mahomes. Um, yeah, will get obviously mentioned, but. He started to get a few. He started to get a few niggly injuries uh, last year. The the ankle, the knees are starting to get banged up, and I think now you'll probably see him doing a lot less sort of, sort of the mobile side of things. And um, the deep threat, Tyreek Hill, again picking up a few injuries. The Chiefs picked up quite a lot along the way, and I wonder whether they go through a whole season of that. So I think that might might hinder them. Um, I will agree with you on Russell Wilson. However, the weapons aren't there. And to be honest, Kyler Murray will probably have a better season than him, in my opinion. I don't know how you think. I, I know you look at, looking at that, but look at, okay. And I, I, yes, it's a fanboy thing. This is why I'm going to say Kyler Murray. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying, I'm, look at the weapons he's now. You put him D hop. He, with what are the numbers he was putting up? And now he's obviously said, and they've come out, you know, the packages will be put in place now for him actually to be more mobile than he was. He's now got Larry. Kirk, 
Kenyon Drake obviously come in and actually put up the numbers that we weren't expecting, and he, ha and he had that to, to go to to rest. And obviously, as I say, now with, with D Hop in there, what the safest hands in football? My God, I think we're going to see some serious numbers. And to be honest, the, the, the absolute fact, I am his fanboy now of Kingsbury, not just because you're <laughs> not. But it's one picture, one but picture. The playbook, <laughs> but the playbook, the, the playbook there that he's going to be. I think we're going to have some, I think we're going to have some fun there. And I think Carla Murray will actually, um, I, won't, I wouldn't say shock people, but maybe shock people on the numbers he actually puts up. Well, um, I no, I'm not surprised at uh, Sam being a fanboy for his uh, and and choosing a homer pick yet again for his Cardinals. I know he's desperate to see them win something, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, I'll just take the best year ever. And if they if they if the actual offensive line can actually keep keep people out uh, and not have uh, Kyler Murray having to dance around, we'll see if he actually can get an MVP. Please, Mr. Genesis, mm. Chris Braithwaite, please oh. can you not pick? Tua as your <laughs> as a homer pick. So please, can you please settle these guys down with a sensible pick, please? Can he be the rookie offensive player of the year? All right. All right. Um, why not? Of course he can. All right. So I don't know if you guys know, obviously it's been eight years that an MVP, uh, that a quarterback has been an MVP the last time there was. It was Adrian Peterson in 2012. And before that, LaDainian Thomas in 2006. So we all know this is the league of the MVPs. And um, so, so once I understood that, I really understood that it's the League of MVP politics also. So with Mahomes and Jackson winning recently, I really believe, and NFL systems probably adjusting to them, they probably wouldn't um, get the MVP again. A lot of times in the NFL, you know, you get injuries, people get hurt, especially those MVP candidates. And it's very rare that they repeat. Um, the last time I believe was Peyton Manning, Mack and whatever. I can't remember. But um. So without those two out of there, they won already. So who's next? Uh, I was going to go with Deshaun Watson, but I believe that his coach is out to sabotage him. So I don't feel that he will go out and um, have the season that we think that he had. And he lost pieces. And the pieces that he bought in doesn't fit his style, you know, I feel. Um, so I have to go with MVP Russell Wilson. I believe it's his time to get the MVP. He's the only Super Bowl uh, champion right now in the NFL that does not have the MVP. Um, and I believe it's just his time, the time in the league. Um, and he will put up those numbers that he's hungry for. The next thing that is the next chip on his shoulder or the next belt or next clip in his belt to go ahead and go um, and get. So I do have uh, Russell Wilson. My dark horses though, uh, Sam would be happy. Kyle Murray is on, is on my short list. He's uh, definitely on my short list with the, uh, with, the, with the weapons that he's gotten. And his second year, I do believe his second year is too much. He's still learning. And I think my veteran dark horse is Matt Ryan. Also with, um, with the pieces he has in Atlanta. Just got Todd Gurley. And he can have an explosive season. He's always up, he's always up in the numbers. It just depends on the team. Why not? He won in 2016, so why not? Listen, I, I I I think that um uh dark horses, they, they, dark horses. they've already they've already they've already started this uh, quarantine thing and he's been there in in his house too long uh with, with that last one. All right. But I, I I'm surprised that none of I you guys are, are picking. Surprised that none of you guys are actually picking. Um, you know, obviously Mahomes is like ridiculous. Like, you know, what what can't he do? Um, and obviously, you know, that bad man. Aaron Rodgers, I'm surprised because that's, that you're going to see a comeback season. And, um, you yeah, know, before we move on to the next subject, my personal thing uh, bet is uh, Danny Dimes from uh, New York. <laughs> but anyway, oh, get off there. there. Get off there. there. Get off there. there. Get off. <laughs> We're removing you from a host. <laughs> get off. <laughs> guys, guys, so, so what we do is we always pick um, our, our stories that, that um, stuck, at, stuck out to the most of us. Um, uh, each week, um, so I will start with Mr. Morgan. Uh, what is your story of the week so far in sports? I like to mix it up a little bit. Obviously, I'll go back to the boxing. I I've brought up Dylan White before, um, and actually, this past week there's been a spat between him and Fury, um, with Dylan White saying that obviously he's knocked him out previously, he was sparring, it's my time, he should be fighting. Whereas Fury's now like waiting in line, little boy and things like that now that it's actually starting this little 
this little beef and obviously now Eddie Hearns come out and be like, yeah, Dylan White should take priorities. He's, he's, he's like spinning plates and money plates where he can. But I feel like Dylan White is getting disrespected so much in the boxing world that um, it, something needs to give at some point. Like the guy just keeps getting, yeah, you, you can fight for the little second belt. You can for the silver medal belt every time and he's getting all the cast offs. And I think it's disrespectful. Um, and I think now it's just getting to a point where it's getting, for boxing fans, I think it's getting boring now. It's like, oh no, we keep talking about Joshua and Fury and, and Wilder shouldn't even be mentioned. Wilder shouldn't even be given another fight, to be honest, after mm. what happened last time. Ouch. Yeah, I, I, I think he should be taken out. Because Dylan White, as I say, just keeps going. It's like, what's going to happen? I can only see that it'll end up, Fury will fight Wilder, Fury will win again, and Dylan White will be so oh, you can fight Wilder now. It's like always, he's just playing second fiddle. Um, and I say, it's just getting disrespectful now that I'd like to see the boxing uh, organisations put a stand to this, like put a stop to this and actually give the guys a chance um, for a proper title fight. Yeah, please, please, boxing, you know, because uh, we, I've all, we, a lot of us have grown up watching, you know, a person fighting the first number one contender, not all this dancing and dodging and all this nonsense. Uh, it's really ruining the sport. Uh, Daniel, what's your what's your pick of the week? Yeah, my pick of the week is the uh, NBA's policy to paint the court in Orlando um, for when the NBA uh, season resumes. They're going to paint the court in Black Lives Matter slogan, and they're going to allow the the players to wear their jersey. Now, in a country that supports freedom of speech, um, I think it's a good. It's it's not. It's, you know, I'm not against them doing it, but then at the same time, let's say if someone wants to, then you know, put a, you know, wear a particular jersey that's not necessarily, you know, in accordance to the Black Lives Matter movement, you know, maybe it goes against it or like all cops matter or something like that. You know, in a country that boasts freedom of speech, you know, where do you draw the line, um, you know, in, in that regards? Again, I'm not against them doing it, but I just think at this point, we're getting to the point, and it's across society as well, and you guys can chime in if you want, where... I think we're starting to see more gestures than any, than actual tangible actions. You know, you know, they're removing films from the Netflix catalog. They're removing these black faced episodes, which is all well and great, but that's not what black people are asking for. You know, if you're going to, if you're going to, if you're going to see black faces say, look, this is wrong, put more money into creating diverse programs or diverse systems. And with the NBA, you know, it's all this, it's just, just so far. I haven't really seen any tangible actions where the NBA is like, okay, let's increase the amount of, um, Blacks that are, are going into executives or technical positions. Let's increase the amount of people of color in, in, in diversity behind the scenes. Everything's all about just these shows of gestures, and, and I think it's partly down to the sort of age we live in. And I just, I just feel like we, at this point, it's just it's a, it's a pointless gesture that the NBA is doing. I rather see them say, "Look, come out, say, look, we're going to put a, a program in place that's geared specifically to people of color to promote them into the NBA." And I think that will solve more long-term because once you have more creative voices and diverse voices, it only stems to give more of a diverse um, outlook and platform. I mean, I've just well said, you know, obviously there's a lot of gestures which are, which are made in goodwill, um, but obviously we want to see action as well. But it is obviously down to the players as well. The players actually hold the key because without them playing uh, at all, then uh, obviously they, they are holding you know, television companies and obviously the owners you know, uh, in, in the palm of their hands at the moment so they can actually make that make that happen as well. Chris, debut show. Um, what was your uh, yes, yes. Pick, pick, pick of the week, your story of the week? My pick of the week is the, is the effect Cam Newton has on the AFC East. But before I get to that, I just want to rebuttal to David and... Uh, um, not David. Uh, yeah, David. Uh, say Dan. That, uh, Dan, I'm sorry. I apologize. Dan, um, saying that uh, other players can come out and say a pro possible opposing things to the Black Lives Matter. I was just saying, nah, the, the league's black. No one's doing. No one wants that smoke. No one. No one's gonna do that. They understand where they are and they understand who runs the league. And I think that they wouldn't want to oppose those particular messages that, um, let's say, LeBron James feels very strong about. I feel in terms of other players, but I do understand your message in terms of like um, the signatures and the signs and getting down to business. I do agree with that 100. percent um, so my, my, my point about the AFC East and New England Patriots and Cam Newton is actually not even about them. It's actually about the Patriots and the, the, the soap opera that the Patriots love 
to be a part of. Um, it's crazy that they signed Cam Newton the day that they got caught cheating again, and they have to go ahead and do a plethora of um, losing money and uh, getting rid of draft picks. But I think it's all a part, like I said earlier, about the psychological hold that they're able to do these things, they're able to get away with these things, and players still want to be a part of that system and still want to win. It almost seems like a win at all cost mentality when it comes to the Patriots, and they are winning whether the NFL punishes them, whether they, uh, whether they, um, whether they get rid of and they get punished in this long time, it doesn't matter. Bill Belichick has a hold on the league, and I think the league is happy that Tom Brady left so there could be another winner, but they're like, man, they won again when they got Cam Newton, whether it's being in the storylines and um, running the headlines. And it seems like Bill Belichick is the guy that just is quiet and sits back and doesn't say anything. But that man is pulling all the strings. The reason why he got the Corey Dillons and the Randy Mosses and the Chad Johnsons, he likes that type of stuff, even though he isn't that. Oh, well, well, well said. I think the rest of the league would actually uh, celebrate you, you coming at the, the, the Patriots, not so much people in Boston. Uh, <laughs> they seem to just get away with it again and again and again. Um, but but you know what? To be honest with you, that at, at the moment in this world of, of so many different things that that everything matters in the scale of things, what what they've just done now really doesn't matter. Um, at the end of the day, we just want to see the sports um, sport back. But you know, uh, yeah, I'm sure they do something else. I'm sure there's something else in there, some private jet or or, or uh, some type of a uh, drone or something like that that they have to be able to spy. <laughs> Or get they're going to figure it out. Else. Trust me. Or they're maybe two QBs leave. playing at the same time or something. I don't know what they're going to do. Thanks, guys, for, for um, you know spending time with me. I appreciate you you know uh, giving me your company this week. Uh, okay. you know, we'll be back next week with another edition of the Sports Edge. I just want to uh, mention, you know, a special mention to, to Kevin Cadle, you know, f- founder member of the Sports Edge. You know, a few years ago, we started this whole journey with him. You know, you know Sam is a, another founder member. And, um, you know, we hope that we're, we're um, you know, keep, keeping his memory alive by, by keeping giving you guys like the highest level of content that we can personally provide, uh, as well as the humor that comes with it. And we are only just fans just talking about the sport that we love. And that's what we loved about him. And, and he gave us a, a massive opportunity and we are eternally grateful. And we will um, try to make sure that we give, uh, you guys, everything that we got, which will actually honor him in the best way that we possibly can. So, um, thank you guys for tuning in. Tune in on iTunes, uh, Spotify, uh, and all those good things on, on all, all your chosen podcast providers. And then also, um, if you check on our down below our social platforms as well, so you can actually keep up with all of our news and things that we actually you know, kind of post. And we try to keep up to date as much as possible. That's Sam, um, if it, yeah, anyway. I, uh, <laughs> but guys you know we'll, we'll be back next week with more news from yeah. all american sports um you know thank you guys for your time nice. all about the you peace, peace.